In today's advanced video tutorial, we'll discuss how you can set up and manage instrument routing and contact. We'll go over insert and send effects, instrument and groups, as well as a new bus system introduced in Contact 5. And never miss the tutorial by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ADSR Toots. In Contact, the basic building block of sound is an instrument. And in each instrument, you have one or more groups. And if you have multiple instruments, they can be saved as a multi. These are the elements that make up the signal path in contact. At the group level of an instrument, you can control the source, group insert effects and send levels, amplifier module, and the group insert effects and send levels. As an instrument it can have many groups, each group can have independent settings from one another. So let's make a new instrument or open an existing one once you have your instrument loaded, enter edit mode. If you made a brand new one, add a few samples to the mapping editor. Sound in the instrument starts at the source module. While it doesn't have any routing options, it does control the playback engine that the instrument uses. I'll cover the various modes in another tutorial. When the sound is generated from the source module, it enters the group insert effects. The group insert effects is a chain of modules that will process the output of a specific group in the order they are placed in the chain left to right. The eight slots all, always receive the signal before it enters the amplifier module, which we'll discuss later. But the group insert effects differs from the instrument insert effects in that all the slots can be optionally placed after the amplifier module. In contact 5, the change of routing, just change the number of slots to the desired number of post amp slots. Slots will be enabled for post amp starting from right to left. To use a module as a send effect, Add it to one of your instrument send effect slots and tap a source signal to be sent there by adding the send levels module to either a group, bus, or instrument insert effects chain. After you have added a slot to the send effects, you'll notice that on this panel it has a control labeled on its right side. This knob allows you to adjust the return level for this effect. You actually have to put in an effect where you send it first for the knob to show up. And this is this is the knob that I'm talking about actually in the actual insert send effects. This is the return knob. So this knob allows you to adjust the return level for this effect. It also allows you to choose a routing target for its output signal by clicking on the small eye icon next to the numerical readout. Now as you work with group insert effects, keep the following in mind. The group insert effect modules, um, they work in a polyphonic manner, meaning that the effect will be calculated separately for each voice that you play. So this can have unexpected results because each module's CPU resources will be multiplied by the number of voices. So for instance, this filter here will be multiplied by the number of voices that I have um, at the group level. So right now I have voice group off so it'll be if I have 32 voices going at the same time you'll have you know this will be multiplied by that. Okay so if you don't need group specific or polyphonic effect processing use the bus or instrument insert effects instead where the effects operate on a sum signal. 
So in the instrument bus or the instrument um, insert effects, um, it doesn't work polyphonic and uh, the effects work on the sum signal. So here um, all the sounds are summed together before the signal works on it. Here each sound is processed individually by each filter. Okay, so there's an instance of each of these basically um, for each voice or it processes each voice as a separate um, entity. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that most parameters of the group insert um, effects can be modulated internally via the modulation matrix. So here's where I can add modulation. So the matrix can be accessed via the modulation button in the lower left corner of an effect panel. Also, many of contact signal processors are capable of processing multi-channel signals. So if a compatible effect allows a, a multi-channel zone or a surround panel, or actually if it follows it, it'll operate on all surround channels. So modules can be added from the modules tab of the browser by dragging it into a slot. So this is a tip that a lot of people don't know about. Um, some modules can only be added to certain places. The icon will change to let you know um, where it can and cannot be added. Okay. So next up is the amplifier module. The amplifier module follows the source module and the group insert effects chain at the group level of contact signal flow. It allows you to control the volume of the signal before it enters the instrument level, panning, and changing the default output assignment and channel routing that occurs between the group and instr instrument levels. Also, when you combine it with modulation, the amplifier module allows you to use volume envelopes. So the amplifier can't be, can't be removed from a group, and you, you can only have one amplifier within a group. So all the signals generated by the source module in the group will pass through the amplifier. The amplifier contains the following controls. Um, you have volume, which adjusts the overall level of all the signals originating from the group. And then you have your pan. Um, this adjusts um, if the group is being, well, if the group is being routed to a stereo channel, this allows you to place the signal in that stereo pan. And note that the volume and pan controls affect the playback of all zones in your group. So if you want to adjust these parameters on a per zone basis, change them in a mapping editor or use zone envelopes. So just quick example, right now I am using um, one group. Okay, so if I want to, to change the, the level and pan of each of these sounds separately, what I need to do, I need to move these into their own zone. So I move each zone to its own group clone. Okay. I'm going to just name this one pan left this one pan right just so you can see the difference turn off edit all groups okay so this is let me make sure is it? okay so this is pan left Another tip to remember is when you're editing multiple groups, always turn on select by MIDI. It makes it a lot easier to select the, um, the MIDI. Okay, so this is a uh, pan left, and this is pan right. So pan right, pan left, pan right, pan left. All right. So the channel routing control allows you to change the channel's um, assignment aspects of the connection between the group and the instrument level. It also allows you to create special routing configurations for up mixing or down mixing your group signal to different channel uh, to a different channel configuration. So to open the channel routing matrix, you click on the channel routing button. So each horizontal row of this matrix corresponds to a channel of the group signal that comes from the input of the amplifier. So this is specified in the leftmost column. 
Um, each vertical column corresponds to an audio channel of the output that you've selected for this instrument in the instrument header. So the output that you select here and it's a two channel output so you see two channels. All right, so you create a connection between an input and an output by clicking in the field that is crossed by the row in the column. So you click on the square that crosses the channel configuration that you like. So in the group, left should go to output one and right should go to output two. An existing connection will be indicated by a colored rectangle. Left click on it again to remove the connection. For more complex routings that convert between different channel configurations, it is possible to send an input signal to multiple output channels or to mix multiple input signals down into one output channel. You do this by simply creating more than one connection within a row, mix up, or within a column, mix down. In these cases, sometimes it's often desirable to create connections with different gain levels. And I've talked about this in another tutorial. Um, it talks about how to use the surround panner um, and I'm not going to rehash that information so if you if you like you can go find that tutorial on um, how to use the surround panner and it'll show you how to up mix or down mix using the channel routing matrix okay so one, one last thing if you want to change the the gain just uh, right click on it to change the gain it will change between um, these presets and it's indicated by color so orange is 0 green is negative 12 all right and you just keep right clicking to cycle between the colors okay the last control of the amplifier allows you to specify an alternate output channel or bus routing for the group when it's set to default, as you can see here, it uses what you specify here in the instrument header. All right. So when it's set to default, um, the group's output is routed to the instrument insert effects chain, which you see here. Then to the output of the instrument, which is the channel output selected in the instrument header. Okay, so it goes all the way through here, insert effects, and then out of the channel that you see here. Okay, so it goes all the way down to insert effects, then out of the instrument into this channel that's specified here. Okay. So if you're using contact 5 and you select a bus from this drop down, choose bus 1 the group's audio will be routed to that bus um, the insert effects chain of that bus and then to the amplifier module which by default is the instrument insert effects chain so if you choose a bus what happens is the instrument goes through the inch through the bus and then to the amplifier module and then this output is the instrument insert effects chain. So it goes all the way down through this, then to instrument effects, and then out to this channel. Okay, so that's by, that's the default flow. You can also send a group's audio directly to a channel output, which will bypass any bus or instrument effects and to do that instead of choosing bus you choose a specific channel so if I have more than one channel I could choose that specifically and bypass the um, the bus or instrument effects so if I do that so what I did was I bypass this and I bypass this and it goes directly out to um, stereo one so as you can see the instrument routing in contact is extremely flexible and has a lot of options. Hopefully this tutorial has given you some insight on how and when to use these various options. And don't forget to check out our website at www.contacttutorials.com 
For more contact tutorials and sounds, ADSR contact tutorials, supercharger contact skills. This is DJ Nice signing off until next time. Now go make some music.